the fuel subsidy probe while uh, the reports being debated on the floor of the House of Representatives. They've adopted some part of their recommendations and uh, perhaps there's still some more stages and steps, if you will, to go before a final one comes up and then to the executive who are expected to then take action. Well, this morning we're joined by Dr. Joe Keo Dumaki. Thank you for coming on this morning. Good morning, thank you. Well, uh, but we know that the Save Nigeria group has talked about this. They've given a two-week ultimatum with which uh, they will proceed on strike. But the two-week ultimatum, we've got people who say, wait a minute, how did you arrive at a two-week ultimatum and what did they intend to achieve with just two weeks? Well, then, first and foremost, we want to see concrete step taken in terms of prosecuting all those who have been indicted. At least concrete steps, something must be on the pipeline. For instance, how did we get to this mess? Okay, let me just take from 2006, when we said uh, uh, fear subsidy. In 2006, the subsidy we had then was just a 260.1 billion. 2007, we moved to 278.9 billion. 2008, we got to 630.9 billion. Then during Yaradua's time, it then decreased to 421.9 billion. We were able to save 200 billion. 2010, we got to 630 billion. So we then had this budget of 245 billion. How did we then get to spending three trillion? Okay, well, uh, let, let's take a report about this because uh, SNG, when you met, this was what you arrived at and how you arrived at it. Intelligence. Even though it's barely a week now since the House of Representatives approved the report of its committee which investigated the management of oil subsidy, the call for action on the report is mounting. President Jonathan is on record to have said no one indicted by the report will be spared. But the Save Nigeria group says it is not swayed by the assurances from the presidency and wants urgent action. We are given two weeks to see concrete steps in the direction of prosecuting the indicted officials, failing which we shall be calling our people out on protest. Given the low confidence the people have in anti-corruption agencies, in dealing with political corruption in Nigeria, we are demanding the appointment of a private prosecutor to deal with these prosecutions. Just as you're trying to recover from the pension scheme scam, along comes this humongous assault, material assault, on the resources of the ordinary people. The populace should be ready for another determined march on corruption. The group went ahead to give a list of areas that should be looked into. It includes the following. Probe of alleged overpayment to NNPC, investigation of the clearance of the incumbent governor of Gombe State while he was accountant general, probe of the petroleum minister, the minister of finance, and two previous finance ministers, Olusha Guaganga and Mansour Mukhtar, and the probe of the 2012 budget subsidy on oil to find out why it is in the region of 800 billion naira. No one should be seen to be above the law. So it's not just paying the service that we need. There must be political will on the part of the government to prosecute all those who have been found wanting. Our message to our countrymen and women is that they must be strong-hearted and determined to take back our country. If our people realize what three trillion can do in the life of a nation, it will not be difficult to understand why we must kill corruption lest it kills us as it is systematically doing already. The group was at the forefront in the organized protest against the oil subsidy removal earlier this year. It says the report has vindicated its strong stance against the removal of subsidy. But what the government would make of this ultimatum remains a question of wait and see. Well, the group apparently unhappy about uh, the assurances the president has given on what will happen 
to the names who were found, well, named to be guilty in that matter. What will concrete, concrete steps mean for you within these two weeks? Well, uh, concrete steps, for instance, we, there are a lot of things shrouded in secrecy. For instance, we are demanding the appointment of a private prosecutor. Although we have institutions that are meant to fight corruption, but because of the low confidence people have in them, that is why we are demanding that. And then with the MBA, they can also have other lawyers who prosecute this case. But let me just say concrete steps. For instance, in the reports, over three, uh, three trillion was said to have been paid to NMPC. And then there was an advert which the executive of NMPC by the central bank denied it that such amount was not paid. Nupeng, Pengasan, they had the advert together. But we're talking about NMPC. There must be someone who signed that. And by the time we see, you know, concrete steps that there must be political will. We must just see at least appointment of somebody who will prosecute these people rather there than must, paying the service. Must, there, there must be a reason why you or your group is skeptical. Perhaps you tell us. For instance, we have had series of probes. We have power probe. Look at the pension scan. A lot of things is being swept under the carpet. We keep. Uh, Having talk is very cheap. It's very cheap. For, I mean, look at the whole mess. You know, the whole crisis, this uh, subsidy thing, it's about corruption. The whole thing is about banditry. It's economic sabotage. So, for instance, now, the, uh, the president has told us that anybody found one thing will be made to face, uh, will, will be made to face justice. But we are saying that when we had three, three oil ministers, we first had Elijah Mukhtar, we had Mr. Nishagu Aganga, then Dr. Ngozi Kujo we also have a, a petroleum minister. So, and all these people were not even mentioned. In trying to get where these funds have gone, at least they also need to come, even if, give evidence, throw more light, and let us know what is happening. Again, another, another worrisome trend, January 12 and 13, the then Accountant General, who is the governor of Gombe now, issued check of 999 million in 128 places totaling about 127 billion and at the end of the day this same person was was left free he should be called to give account who are those companies that receive those money what was the money used for they should trace those things because the the thing you know we can just we can't just Keep quiet and allow and allow all this money yeah, to go in that, that is why look at the SS crude oil that was twenty billion dollars. It has gone to three point six. If there was anything if there wasn't anything like that, it that means the uh, pro panel didn't didn't do some fantastic job. No, they they did. But your group praised them. If you say no, they, no, they, no, no, I said no, they did. Foreign. They did very good job. At least since 1999 that they've been there, they are representative of the people. At least this, this is the first time that we've seen that. At least they've done something. They've been on the part of the people, the masses, and that's why we give kudos to them. And we, I mean, they, what what they've done, we go a long way in or even all the mysteries that we have. Why well, haven't they gone back to the power probe then? Because the, the whole Nigeria is still focused on them on that one. It seems that it's been swept under the carpet. Yes, that's it. In fact, this one, this, this, this uh, current probe now is a litmus test for them because there are several other things. We had General Basinjo, who was the oil minister for eight years. There are a lot of things we'll have to go back to and uh, interrogate. But this current you know, one that we have, is well, the, sorry, was there any mention about uh, that eight year period that he was? No, no, there wasn't. Their own the time of references 2009, 2010, 2011, three years. Isn't so, it? Because we have people who also did ask, well, why did they just take it from there? Because were they afraid of calling some people to come and answer? Then you stopped from 2009 upwards? At least they, they did that because of the. Uh, I'm not just trying to uh, defend them, but I think because of the. We had. A wicked and insensitive New Year gift, and the whole country was already in tumult. And as a result of that, I think they called an emergency sitting, and they decided to take those three years. And we are saying that if we painstakingly go through this report, we also need to go back to just find out how we got into this mess, and then how we move forward. Okay, but the thing about this is that is it not hasty for 
SNG to give a two-week ultimatum and they're looking for concrete steps because the House of Reps is not an investigative body. Mm. They're not a prosecuting body. Mm. Whatever they do is mainly advisory. So, well, well like we the thing is that we are used to people agonizing, agonizing, and not organizing. It's not that it's hasty. What we are saying really is that we don't expect any miracle within those uh, two uh, within two weeks because we have mind bogging revelation. But let us just see concrete steps being taken. For instance, we will have the appointment of a, a, somebody who will prosecute them, a private prosecutor. We also have lawyers who will join. Yeah, we'll have how would they work in the same society? You go to the police, police will tell you you want to take our jobs and do our jobs. They will work within the same institution that is challenged. How would a private prosecutor function in that environment? Well, uh, it, 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 that's what I just said. At the end of the day, it depends on the political way. We have institutions like EFCC, ICPC. All these, will have been, all these institutions will have been strengthened, at least for them to go after all those who have been indicted. You know, my colleague's question is important in the light of the fact that, you know, the House of Reps have been criticized severally for not doing anything, for being just a sitting duck, rubber stamping everything that the executive brought to it. But this time around, it was the same institution that was able to unravel all of this and, you know, leave up to the name that everyone's now saying, oh, they did a thorough job here, let's give them kudos. So don't you think that in, this, in the same vein, the EFCC and the ICPC, knowing how important this is to the Nigerian people and how this is a litmus test for this particular government in terms of its resolve to fight corruption, will take its job seriously? Well, they will, but like what, what we've been saying, a lot of people have they, they misrepresented, you know, what we meant by two weeks. Because this report has been out, and what we see is that people, I mean, especially on the part of the government, we just keep talking, people will be brought to boot, they'll be brought to justice, and there's no doubt about it that, honestly, this whole mess that we are into has led us, you know, to a, a very, very low level economically and that's why we just said on our own part we should see concrete steps being taken list out those who are to face justice who are to be prosecuted appoint these private prosecutors and let us even know even if they have not started prosecuting them yeah. let can us I, know that ask, something is on the pipeline can i I'm ask one very sorry to cut you there but can i ask one very pertinent question where does smg derive its powers from in the sense that you know, you tend to speak on behalf of the people. But in this particular case, would you say that what you're saying is a representation of what the people are saying as well? Yes, what, what we're saying is a representation of what the people are saying. Because there's no doubt about it. That and also in terms of the ultimatum that you've given? Yes, there's no doubt about it. As I speak with you now, it's already May. No uh, much allocation has not been given to states. As we also talk, the level of poverty, the maternal mortality, terrorism, you know, this corruption has adversely affected the people of this country. And that is why we expect a leeway. There should be positive steps that should be taken so that our people will know. Because how do we get to spending over about three, three trillion? You know, for some. Is the, you know, for sorry to cut you again. You know, for some Nigerians, they say we shouldn't even dwell on that figure because uh, uh, it looks like uh, it's somehow a bloated figure. I'm quite sure you must have seen some section of the the, the such section of Nigerians saying that their names appeared on that mm -hmm. list and they're taking the National Assembly House of Representatives specifically to court because that is not a true reflection of what transpired. Yeah, yes, we have had a series of advertorial in the newspaper, counter allegations, clearance, and everything. But I really so think. So, should we take it to the courts, everything? Honestly, it's when we get to the courts, that the courts, the judicial process will just painstakingly go through. Although it might move at a snail pace, but there will be that sigh of relief that at least something is being done. I want to tell you that for January and February, about 340 billion has been deducted. You know, for this subsidy. And as I also speak with you, I also know that the uh, NNPC, the question of um, subsidy on kerosene, that one uh, has no long, was no longer in place. But NNPC also got about 
300 billion for this. Okay. And then the PPRA again, we, we had the 285 billion that was in essence of what PPRA. So, so we also had companies, about 20 companies that were not registered, but they were made to import fuel. These are all submissions or findings from the probe that went on in the House of Reps. Yes. Now, the, the, this, the reason why I ask, isn't it hasty? Because this is just one step out of the many steps that yes. will be taken before yes. it can be said that no action is being taken. Mm -hmm. After the House of Reps is over and done with, the Senate is also sitting on this matter. They've sat as a matter of fact. So then it will be submitted to the President. They'll make recommendations and pass it on. So it hasn't been passed on. Mm -hmm. So on what grounds are we saying now that nothing will be done? Okay, what, what we're saying in essence is that in terms of telling citizens of this country and also the government that concrete steps like you have said the process that this reports will have to go through if we keep going through the process then we know that something is being done and the citizens of this country we just know that it's not that the report is just there is gathering dust so whatever process is goes through before the trial then we'll know that it's not just that people are just folding their arms and kimbo and just waiting for a miracle so Concrete step is that something must be done. Not even actually bringing people to trial immediately, but also ensuring that we painstakingly go through the process and we know that we are moving. It's not just going to be like motion without movement, but okay. that we are moving from one stage to the other. And doing that, we will then know that this matter will not be swept under the carpet. Okay, well, the House of Reps has passed this, so they will uh, eventually get it to the president. So. Is it that the SNG will call people out after two weeks or what for protest? Is that what it means? Well, uh, what, what the Safe Nigeria group is saying in essence is that when the report is already out, the appropriate bodies that will have to go through the reports and then the prosecution, the trial. You know, like, like we have rightly said. The whole thing is not going to be a straight jacket thing. It's not going to be like 100 meters raised. It's going to be a gradual process. So when we see that there's that gradual process, there's sincerity of purpose, and people will be brought to justice, then we know we come at the end of two weeks, tell the citizens of this country that these are the steps that have been taken. The report is there. It has gone to the president. This is what has been done, and then people will be brought to justice. So what so, you're offering, in essence, from what you've said so far, it seems to be some support for the government, if indeed you see taking concrete steps to combat corruption in this particular sector. Are you offering your support? What we are, what we are saying really is that something concrete must be done so that we we'll move this nation forward. So when we see that it is not only talk, it's, it's not only, I mean, it's not only theorizing, but the pra practicals of it, that the report is there, we have moved from one stage to the other, we are progressing, then we know that something concrete has been done, and then we can tell the citizens of this country that this is what has been done in two weeks, we should be patient, at least with the both steps taken, we are sure that at least this report will not go, the other, way, the other reports have gone. Why should we take SNG seriously? Because there are some members who have political affiliation and interest. So some Nigerians will ask, if I'm in the opposing political party, and then I see some members of SNG pushing this, I could think that this is political. Well, uh, I, I, I don't think so. Because uh, SNG, I mean, Save Nigeria Group, is, uh, is made up of uh, uh, organized civil society groups, individuals, but there's really no one at this point in time that we will talk about having political affiliation. What we'll have is having the seeds of this country in mind and also having a country that works. Because if we do have a country that works, then we see that all other things will follow. So we are trying to do things in a very transparent manner so that at the end, and also align citizens of this country to realize that all this money, these billions and trillions we are talking about, it's not government money, it's our own money. And we deserve the right, we, we should know what has happened to this money. And okay. for those who have contributed to the economic sabotage, to this banditry, it's going to assuage the anger of citizens of this country when they see them be brought to justice.